So we're going to take this model uh, and continue to build on it and then use it to explain the various pressure belts found on Earth's surface. We look at this, now let's try to figure out, well, what's going on with these arrows? Why are, well, let's try to figure out what I'm trying to showcase here. Uh, and if we can see, in the northern hemisphere, all the arrows are bending to the right. Uh, and in the southern hemisphere, all the arrows are bending to the left. We've already explained the reasons for that. Uh, another thing you'll notice is the arrows for the low pressure are coming in. Uh, they're going to converge with each other, which once again makes sense because that's a characteristic of a low pressure is converging and rising air. Meanwhile, in the polar highs, uh, you can see those arrows are leaving uh, the high pressure. Uh, one of the things is we have these highs and lows actually in between the equatorial low uh, pressure and then the ones in the polar highs. Uh, and so the equatorial and the polar ones, they're strictly because of temperature uh, differences which cause those lows and high pressures. These ones in between here, the yellow and the greenish one, uh, those are a little bit different in the sense that they're a little bit more physics, they're a little bit more mechanical uh, as far as why the low pressures and the high pressures are existing. We're not going to go too much into that into this course. Uh, but let's go ahead and try to understand once again what are we looking at. If you look at the new high pressures and low pressures that I've added in between the equatorial and polar uh, pressure zones have still have the same characteristics. That high pressure uh, has in the northern hemisphere uh, divergence, separation, arrows leaving that box. Uh, whereas the low pressures have ones coming in. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about each of these uh, right now. This here is one of the most important images we'll look at the entire semester. What we've done now is we've actually named each of these low and high pressure zones. Uh, equatorial low pressure, that's the same one that we've been talking about that's found there along the equator, uh, and it's also known as the ITCZ. I'll explain that here in a minute. Subtropical high pressure to the north and the south of the equatorial low pressure, and so one characteristic of the subtropical high pressure is it's going to be dry. Uh, we know this because high pressure is not going to bring uh, precipitation, so we're going to see a lot of dry uh, characteristics in areas that are dominated by the subtropical high pressure. Uh, then closer to us, go ahead and throw in that yellow line, that's where we are, the mid-latitudes, uh, we're going to be affected by low pressures. Uh, so if we step back and look now, we got this whole snapshot of a very generalized model of the world's pressure belts, uh, but also we can now kind of visualize why do the arrows bend to the right in the northern hemisphere, we already know that answer, why they bend to the left, uh, why are they different colors, the red illustrating warm meaning warm, uh, whereas the purple, warm, but not super warm, like you would find there along the uh, equatorial low pressure, uh, meaning cold, uh, which is going to be a key fo focal point for understanding uh, some key differences from place to place here on Earth.